We will be covering basic electricity in an effort to understand the role that it plays in powering a pumping system. The flow of electricity is like the flow of water. The voltage is similar to pressure and the amperage is similar to gallons per minute. The resistance in wire is similar to the friction loss in a pipe. These values can be combined in series and parallel to achieve the desired effect. A hole in a pipe causing a leak is similar to a ground fault, which is leakage of electricity. Wattage or load is similar to flow and pressure combined, measured in watts. So look at these comparisons. One big difference is that a hole in a water pipe will get things wet, but a hole in insulation can result in electrical shock hazard. There is one important difference between a water system and an electrical system. An electrical system is closed, that is, the flow of current should never leave the system. If it does, that's called a ground fault, which we will talk about later. A water system, however, is open. In most cases, we discharge the water and it leaves the system. Perhaps an exception would be a closed-loop geothermal heating system. While all our motors are AC, this illustration will help to understand the relationship of DC to AC. While AC in the green is an alternating current running from positive to negative, the DC red line remains positive and magnitude will depend upon the load. The AC voltage will be in the form of alternating voltage. Most residential power is single phase indicated by the single sine wave with a voltage alternating between a positive 120 volts to a negative 120 volts 60 times in a second. This form of power allows us to raise or lower the voltage with a transformer, which is impossible with DC. As indicated in the next slide, we will see how the power company uses this to distribute the power across the nation. Three-phase power is used in variable speed drives and industrial applications. This power has three sine waves all 120 degrees out of phase with each other and alternating positive to negative just like the single phase. Besides the simplicity of three phase, the motor requires less copper wire to carry the same amount of wattage as single phase. Voltage is the amplitude of the electricity measured in volts. Most voltage at the site in North America will be around the following values, 120, 240, 480, and 600. The higher the voltage, the less copper wire needed to supply the same amount of power to the load. Power loss in the wire is dependent on the voltage and wire size, which is resistance that the current will see. This is why the power lines going throughout the country are high voltage, sometimes as high as 765,000 volts. For example, say we change 120 volts to 240 volts through the same wire, we will have twice the wattage capability at the other end. The motor, unlike a resistive load, draws higher amps at both high and low voltage relative to the voltage rating of the motor. In a resistive load, the higher the voltage, the lower the amps. By reading the voltage going to the motor, we can tell if the voltage is adequate for the motor to run. We will cover how to do this when we cover meters. As voltage passes through an object, there is a drop in the voltage due to resistance. This is true for both AC and DC voltages. A set of contacts in a switch will show a minor drop across them when closed and a full voltage reading when open. This fact can be used to test overloads to see if they are open or closed when power is being supplied. With multiple loads in series, the loads will share the voltage and depending on the proportions of the loads, the voltage could be half on each load. In this illustration of series switches, we will look at applying multiple switches to control or power a device where if either of the switches is open, the circuit will not be energized. The load will not be energized unless both switches are closed. This may be applied to a pressure switch and float switch where the tank is calling for water. The pressure in the line indicates pressure is satisfied and even though the tank is empty, the pump won't run at this time. The other scenario would be the float switch is saying the tank is full, but the pressure switch sees low pressure and is trying to run the pump, but it won't run unless both switches are closed. In this illustration of parallel switches, we will look at applying multiple switches to control or power a device where if both of the switches are open, 
the circuit will not be energized. This may be applied to two float switches in a tank where we want to use most of the tank up before we refill the tank and have both switches open before we shut the tank down. This is an example of switch priority and can be combined with series switches on one or both sides to make sure all desired priorities are met. Voltage is usually measured with a volt ohm meter. To use, turn the meter on and turn to the V with a wavy line indicating alternating voltage. With most digital meters, you don't have to worry about the range since they automatically adjust. Accurate readings are important, so keep your meter calibrated on a routine basis. To measure the amps on a wire, the best instrument is a clamp type meter, which can read most currents without damage to the meter. This meter doesn't have to be wired into the circuit. You simply clamp the meter around the wire you want to measure. Using a volt ohm meter to read resistance is the best way to check motor windings and wire. To operate the meter, turn the knob to the upside down horseshoe, and once again, most meters auto range, so you don't have to figure out where to set the range. When checking a circuit, make sure the power is off and capacitors have been drained of voltage or the meter may be damaged. The meter has to have the capability to read the value you're looking for. Know what your meter can do before attempting to take any readings. If the meter isn't capable of the value that you're looking for, the reading may mislead you to a wrong conclusion. When testing for a ground fault or failure of insulation, a MEGR is a must. To test insulation on wire or motor, voltage higher than the VOM, volt ohm meter, can provide is needed. Franklin motors are rated for 1,000 volts. To test them and the wiring, we recommend the test be run at 1,000 volts. To run the test, hook your test leads between the power leads you want to check and the green ground wire. The reading may be in millions of ohms. Since the test voltage is 1,000 volts, use the alligator clips to hold the test leads to the wires. A ground fault is more than a problem with the system. It is a danger to the user. The longer the wire, the greater the resistance and therefore the greater need for larger wire. In conclusion, remember that the balance of voltage and amperage in the circuit will ensure a long and proper life to the motor.